Gamers, this is Mark Berkey, and we're back for one more video using QGIS. And this is a critical one, because if you're going to be doing your own research projects where you want to use spatial statistics and do spatial econometrics, you have to be able to create a spatial data set. And that's really what we're doing here, is we're going to take some existing map files that you can download from the web, and I'm going to show you how to subset some parts of a map, because normally you're not going to be able to download a map that's exactly what you want. So we're going to subset it, and then we're going to read in some other variables into that map data set, and then we're going to save it as a spatial data set and map all in one. Then in the very next video, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be using that same map file that we're going to create today, and we're going to explore spatially this some of this data in another free program called Geoda that was created by Luke Anselin and his team. So it's crucial that you follow along. So as always, I've put together some data for you. I haven't done everything for you because you're going to download this right now. You're going to pause the video and you're going to get this zip file. So go to my website www.berkeyacademy.com or you could just go to spatial.berkeyacademy.com and right here is the video that we're making right now. I hope you watched GIS Intro 1 to get your feet wet with QGIS a little bit. If not, eh, it's not, it's not that difficult. Here's QGIS Intro 2 and download, click this link here, this is a, a zip file that has some map files, some comma separated value files, and also I typed up a little text document there with some brief descriptions of some of the variables that we're going to be using in there. Go ahead and download that, unzip it into a convenient file, and let's get going. Here's just a little overview of what we're going to be doing today. So we're going to be creating a custom spatial data set. As I said, we're going to read in a map with all the U.S. counties. Then we're going to suppose that what we want to do is focus on just two states in the United States, and we're just going to look at those counties. So we're going to subset just those counties out. We're going to save those states as their own little shape file. Then we're going to read in some additional variables from a comma separated values file, and we're going to combine them with the data that already exists in the map file for those counties and save it all as a brand new shape file so that on our next video, which will be coming very soon, we're going to just take that shape file and drag it into a program called Geoda, which is a, it's one of these programs I think about as being an 80-20 program. It'll do about 80% of what you might want to do for only about 20% of the effort as some of the other tools like MATLAB or R. So it's a great way to start visualizing data and start getting a feel for what contiguity files are, what neighbor relationships are all about, and what spatial statistics are about. So that'll be our next video. So let's go ahead and dive into the data that we have here. So once you've downloaded and extracted the files, so this is the zip file. These are the files that you'll find in there. Uh, CODAT 2003 variable descriptions, just some basic descriptions of what these variables are in this comma separated values file here, CODAT 2003. So this is a lot of data on uh, liquor sales um, and characteristics of people in counties in Virginia and North Carolina in the United States around the year 2003. So I have some crime rates, some income variables, race, poverty variables, and alcohol sales, some other interesting things we'll look at. And these other files on the end, these are all part of a shape file. Remember, a shape file has a lot of different files that all relate together. So this .shp file tells the map program how to read in all this information, where to put it on a map, and what data is associated with it in this DBF file, this database file. So since you've already installed QGIS, if you haven't, go install QGIS. It's available for Windows, Mac, and Linux. Since I've already installed it, we can just double click on the shape file and QGIS opens. Now you'll see here 
as I've mentioned once before, that when, at least when I run QGIS, I get all these little error windows, but it doesn't seem to make a whole heck of a lot of difference. So here are all the counties in the United States, including some of the territories like Puerto Rico down here. And in order to zoom in, I'm using my mouse wheel, roll it up to zoom in, out to zoom back. What we're going to be doing is we're going to say we're just interested in the counties in Virginia and North Carolina, which are over in this region right here. Now, let me show you the easiest way that you can select and then extract counties for certain regions that you might be interested in. So if we go over here to this little, uh, this is the name of the file we read in over here, GZ2010, blah, blah, blah. Right click on it and go down to filter here. And this brings up a little query builder. I think it's related to uh, SQL. And so what we want to do is select certain counties from certain states. And so let's, in order to do this, let's double click the state variable here, double click. And you see what it does is it adds the name of the variable in quotes down here. It's kind of helping us build this query, this, this search that we want to do. A good thing you can do over here is you can click sample and it'll give you some of the values, some of the unique values of this, the, that are in this. So you can see what this variable looks like or you can click all. Now all is not going to be too much here because this is just the, the states in the United States plus some other codes for Puerto Rico. And um, so what we want here is states uh, for North, North Carolina and Virginia. And these numbers here are called FIPS codes. Let me show you those very quickly. It just, if you just Google state FIPS codes, you'll come up with all kinds of different listings here. Uh, just click on one of them at random. And this is just a listing of the states in the United States and what the FIPS codes are. And FIPS stands for Federal Information Processing Standard. It's just a way that we name things like counties and um, states, block groups, census tracts, and things like that. They all have a unique number coding system. So if we want North Carolina, that's number 37. And if we want Virginia, that's number 51. So 37 and 51. Let's go back to our map here. And we have state, click equals, 37 and state, double click state, equals, there we go, and click test, and it says zero rows. Hold on, let's see what I did wrong here. Oh, of course, silly me, there's, there's no state where it's 37 and 51, it's, I want the ones that are either state equals 37 or state equals 51. Returned 234 rows. And that's about right because there are 100 counties in North Carolina and there are a little bit more than 100 in Virginia. Okay. Let's just hit okay here and let's see what we have. Yeah, that looks like the states of Virginia and North Carolina here. So that's what we want to see. Now what we can do is Let's go ahead and save this as a shapefile that only includes these counties. So let's right click, save as, window comes up. What do you want to save it as? Well, an Esri shapefile. The .shp is, that kind of format is recognized by most kinds of mapping and spatial statistics programs. And we can just give it a name here. So let's, uh, put it in our create sp uh, custom spatial data set here file, and we'll call it NCVACO, North Carolina and Virginia counties, save, and OK. And it adds it to the map. Now, we don't need this old one anymore, so I'm going to click the X here. It was underneath the blue, blue one, so we couldn't really see it anyway. Let's, let's just have a look at what we have. Let's right click and go to open attribute table and let's see what variables are in there. Uh, so this is some kind of ID variable. This is the state. 
37 and down here are the 51s for the uh, Virginia and we can sort them if we want so that we could have all the North Carolina on top just by clicking the title here and the county number also has a FIPS code so 179, 001, etc. The name of the county and it just tells us that they're all counties and I'm not sure what this variable over here is. It, um, now this is only important because we're getting ready to add some variables to this. So let's close this up and let's add in some comma separated values. Now I showed you that file at the beginning, uh, codat 2003csv so click the big comma here. File name. Um, let's go back in here. Here's that comma separated values file. And this shows us all the variables that are in there. Now, even though this data does have a longitude and latitude column for the centroid of each county, we don't want to read it in here as a geome geometric file with point coordinates. We just want to read it in no geometry because we're going to match it to these counties in a different way. We could do it based on those centroids. It's prone to, to more errors than doing it the way we're getting ready to do it here. Um, so comma separated values, no geometry, OK. And that just creates a new little text file here that has no geometry associated with it at all. But now what we want to do is make a is produce a join. But before we can produce a join, let's just let's just look at the let's, so let's right click on the county debt we just read in open attribute table. See there's this FIPS code that has the state 37 and the county 001, 37003, 37005. So these are the FIPS county codes. What we need is a variable that we can match up to in the map county file here. Let's go back and have a look and see what these look like. Open attribute table. See there's no variable here that would match up exactly to one of those other ones. So we're going to have to very quickly here create a variable. What I'm going to do is I'm going to combine this 37 with the 179, the 37 with the 181, and we're going to create a state county FIPS code combined. In order to do this, click the little pencil that toggles editing mode. Let's just actually edit this uh, data here. And when you turn that on, that outlines everything in red. So you can you can actually move the shapes around too. We're not going to be doing anything like that. We want to add a variable. So go over here to it's a little kind of orange square in the uh, bottom right hand corner, new column. What name? Let's just call this FIPS, or we could call it FIPS2, whatever we want to call it. I'll call it FIPS2. It could have the same name as the one in the other file. It doesn't have to. Um, do we want this to be an integer? I'm going to call it a string, uh, and I'm going to make it five wide. I want it to treat this like it's a letters and not numbers that it's going to do any mathematics on. That's why I chose string. And it needs to be five wide, 37179. OK. So now it's created this blank field. Now we have to tell it what to put in that field. So go to this little abacus symbol, open field calculator. Instead of create a new field, let's update the field we just created. And that was FIPS2. And what do we want to do here? Well, what we want to use is a string operator called concatenate, concat. And what do we want to concat? We want to concatenate the two fields we had there, state and county. So state, and I think it's probably going to be important that we do, do them in caps here, just like they appear here, county. Concat state county. Let's hit OK and let's uh, cross our fingers and hope this works. Hey, there we go. So now we have this variable FIPS2 that will uniquely match up with the data in our comma separated values file. OK, so now let's uncheck the pencil because we don't want to be editing this anymore. Do we want to save the changes? Save, yes. 
All right. Now we can do a join. We're almost done, guys. Tomorrow will be the fun part, whenever we get to actually do the spatial data analysis. Now we want to right click on our map file in CVA County, and we want to go to properties, and we want to set up a join. So a join is going to join the map file with the comma separated values file. So click the plus sign down here, new join layer. So we want to join layer County Dat 2003 to, and it says, uh, what's the join field? Well, FIPS is in the County Dat map file. The target field is the FIPS 2, that little variable we just created. And choose which fields are joined. Oh, let's, so th this just says what, what which variables from the comma separated values file do we want to add in here? And let's just click them all. If somebody knows of a way to click all of these at once, let me know. I've, I've tried a few things and have not come up with a very good answer here. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that when you read in these variables, there's a maximum length that your variable name can have. And I think it's 10 characters. So some of these might get truncated. So keep that in mind. Another thing we're going to want to do here when we get all these check, 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 uh, is we're, we're going to want to mess with this custom field name prefix here. By default, what most map programs want to do when you create a join is it wants to create a new variable name, which is involves the variable names here and which data set did they come from? Now, we don't want this long custom field name prefix. I just, I don't want any. So I'm just going to tell it no custom na name prefix. Okay, now how can we tell, well, first, before we, get, we go back, hit apply, hit okay. Uh, let's, let's see if it actually worked. Right click, let's go to the open attribute table and we should see all those variables over here on the right now attached to this file. Good to go. The last thing we want to do is we just want to save this with all of the data in there. And just to double check that this saves it, I'm going to click Save As. And I'm going to give it a new name and I'll call it um, something like NCVA Co with variables, something like that. So I know this is the one that has all the data that we're going to want to use to explore spatially and eventually do some spatial econometrics with, okay? So let's save that, okay? And there we go. And again, just to double check that everything's right, seeing is believing, we, we right click on that purple one and all the data is there. So I'm going to end this video here. If you have any questions about what we did, want to hear anything again, or if I, if I skipped over something, let me know. But what you're going to want to do is just keep this file. And soon, tomorrow, I hope, what I'll be able to do is I'll make a video where we're going to download a program called Geoda which is, again, free. I'll warn you way ahead of time if, before we go into anything that's going to cost any money. We're going to download Geoda, and we're going to just basically drag this map file in there, and we'll be able to visualize these variables and their spatial relationships, doing a lot of cool little exploratory spatial data analysis kinds of tricks. So, if you like this video, please let me know. Please give me a thumbs up. If you don't like it, give me a thumbs down. Give me your comments. Give me your feedback. Either way, I really want to know whether you're learning, whether you, whether you like the direction this is headed, and give me some suggestions about anything else that you'd like to see here. Okay, guys? So I will see you next time where we start to actually do some spatial statistics. Good luck, guys. <laughs>